Hello and welcome back. This is Signals to Danger. Sort of. This isn't going to be a normal full length episode, but rather the first in a mini series nested within the main series. My plan is to intersperse the main episodes where we focus on a single incident in detail with these shorts where I'll go into a little bit more detail on individual safety features that have been introduced. Hopefully this will make it a little easier for those of you who want to know more about them without bogging us down within the main episodes. Now I'll always go into enough detail in the main ones for everyone to understand, but this will be an opportunity for people who want to dive a little deeper. So now that you know what's going on, let's get started. Welcome to a Signals to Danger bonus episode. I'm Dan. In real life, I'm a real professional, and today I'll be taking you through this podcast. Specifically today, we'll be taking a bit of a deep dive into one of the most important and prominent safety features on the UK rail network. If you've ever sat in the seats just behind the driver's cab, you probably know more about this than you realise already. Have you ever sat there and heard the noises which leak through that cab door? If you've heard this... Or this? Then you already know what we're talking about today. It's a fundamental part of the railway safety system. It helps to protect signals, changes in line speed, junctions and work sites up and down the country. What this episode's about is AWS. AWS is what it's known as virtually exclusively on the railway, but its full name is the Automatic Warning System. It's now used in a multitude of scenarios but the most common is around signals, and most of the time you hear it, it will be to do with them. To start with, the really simple way that it works is this. As your train approaches a signal, one of two things will happen. If the signal is clear, you will get the sound of a bell, and you can continue. If the signal is not, it's either at danger or caution, and then you'll get the sound of a horn. So there you go, bonus episode over, that was AWS. Of course I am joking, we are going to delve a little bit deeper than that. So the system works like this. Before each signal, there is a piece of equipment between the running rails in the space that we call the forefoot. Simply because the distance between the rails is around about 4 feet. Very imaginative industry, the railway. This piece of equipment is known as an AWS ramp. And you've probably seen them before. Generally speaking, they're coloured yellow, although not always. You can get them in green, and to be honest, even the yellow ones get pretty dirty. There's a fair likelihood that you've stumbled upon these at some point in the past. These AWS ramps consist of at least a few components. A sloped piece of metal, a permanent magnet which is constantly magnetised, and an electromagnet which can be turned on and off. The principle of the system is set reset. As the train passes over the permanent magnet, the system is set. As the train continues, it passes over the electromagnet which resets the system. The electromagnet is only energised, turned on, if the attached signal is green. This shows a proceed aspect to the driver and requires no alteration to his or her driving. If the electromagnet is on and the system is reset in this way, the AWS sounder in the cab will make the bell sound. It's called a bell because back in the early days of the system it was a bell. Nowadays it's an electronic chime. That's the sound that you hear like this. Now that system can only be reset within a second after it is set. If the signal is showing a caution or a danger aspect, the electromagnet won't be energised. This means that when the train passes over the permanent magnet, the system is set, but it isn't reset within that required time frame of one second. 
At that point, a warning horn sounds in the cab, which, funnily enough, is the sound like this. The driver then has 2.75 seconds to press a button in the cab to acknowledge the alarm. Funnily enough, this button is known as the AWS Acknowledgement button. The really clever bit of the system is this. If the driver doesn't acknowledge the alarm within that prescribed time frame, the train's brakes are automatically applied in a full emergency setting. That train will then be brought to a stand. If he does respond in time, which let's be frank, they normally do, and they really should, the system is reset by them pressing the button. In the cab, there is a visual indicator which serves to remind the driver that he's currently under a caution signal. This is known as the sunflower, as, again, funnily enough, it looks a little like that. A yellow starburst on a black background. Like I said, this indication, which remains in the cab till the next signal, should remind that driver that they are driving under a caution aspect. Once the train reaches the next AWS ramp, the whole process repeats itself. The last thing that's probably worth mentioning is the reason that some are green. In areas where the trains take their power from a third rail, there is a strong electromagnetic field created by the current flowing through the rail. Because of this, extra strength magnets are needed to be detectable above the background magnetism. Those ones are the green versions. The system was introduced to combat the issue of drivers being distracted and not reacting appropriately to signals. The very first versions of it appeared in the form of automatic train control. This was installed by GWR, Great Western Railway, who was one of the big four train operators before British Railways was formed. The earlier system was reliant on a physical contact between the track and the train, not magnets but it was found from as early as 1906. A physical ramp set between the tracks would make contact with a shoe underneath the locomotive at distant signals. These were the caution signals under absolute block signalling. We did go through absolute block a little bit in the Irk Valley Junction episode that I put out last week. The idea was improved upon in the 30s by others, and areas of the Southern Railway saw trials of a magnet-based system, as did a few lines of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway, particularly those ones that were quite frequently plagued by fog. The system proved successful, but it wasn't widely introduced across the board, mainly due to World War II. At the end of the 40s, British Railways was brought into life, and it set out to make an improvement on the various ATC systems to create a national standard. Using the best parts of both systems, they got to the job of creating the BR standard of ATC. The horrific three-train collision at Harrow and Wheelstone in 1952 put additional priority on the project and it was finally ratified in 1956, and then by 1959 it had been renamed to AWS. It would be fair to say that the system has had a monumental effect since the day it was implemented, and over the decades, countless lives will have been saved as a result of it. As the years went on, British Railways found other opportunities for this technology to be used to prevent accidents. There are many locations around the network where the permissible speed drops quite substantially. One such location, which I have mentioned before, is Morpeth near Newcastle. The inquiry into a derailment there in 1969 advised that a permanent magnet be fitted before the speed changes. The permanent magnet doesn't have an electromagnet attached to it, so the warning horn will always sound in the cab. It's a really good way to remind the drivers to pay attention to that speed limit sign. Since then, that's actually become standard practice wherever the maximum limit drops by a third. Those of you who've listened to the podcast before will also remember the derailment at Nuneaton in 1975. We covered it in episode 3. One of the recommendations of the inquiry into that accident was that temporary permanent magnets, which I appreciate does sound a little oxymoronic, be fitted at the commencement of temporary speed restrictions. These are quite simply a magnet bolted between the tracks that activates the AWS equipment as the train approaches the temporary speed restriction boards. That's now standard practice, and it happens at temporary and emergency speed restrictions all over the network. I suppose the last thing that it's important to mention 
is that AWS is not without its limitations. The fact that some commuter services are constantly running under caution signals means that drivers in these areas are essentially just clearing alert after alert after alert at every signal. It can mean that they get lured into a state of conditioning. Sometimes it's referred to as the double yellow zombie effect. Every signal they approach, they have to press the AWS acknowledgement button. That's where human factors really come into it and why training is so important. So that really does bring us to the end of our first bonus episode. I hope next time I mention AWS in an episode, everything's a little clearer for you. Yet again, albeit briefly, I've been Dan, and this has been Signals to Danger. Find us on social media, like, share, or come to visit us at signalstodanger.com. The opening and closing credits of this episode were Brand New World, and the background music is Difference. Both of these tracks are by Kai Engel. Thanks for listening in, and until the next full episode, travel safe.